it's Karen Berniston here with an assembly video for one of our die sets. This is die number 1088, the heart pivot panels, and you can check out all of our die designs at karenberniston.com. The heart pivot panels is the newest in the pivot panels line. These are popular dies because they make a beautiful standalone card. You know, you can put that pop-up right inside a card size of your choosing. It's a very impressive looking pop-up, even though the assembly is really, really simple. But then also they are sized to coordinate perfectly with some of our other pop-up dies, like the twist panel pop-up, which I'll show today. And then they also will fit in either of our tag book dies. The die set comes with seven pieces, and it's the big one that's the pop-up. And you'll just cut that using any die cutting machine that can accommodate a wafer-thin die. And I am using a Sizzix Big Shot today. So it's all just a single piece, and your first step is just to work the folds. And the first thing I like to do is work the center fold of the piece in both directions. Okay, and then the next set of folds I want to find is actually on the edge of the panel. So there's a score line across here, not through the little small heart, but everywhere else. You'll actually see the score lines. And what you want to do is fold all of those score lines to the back, so three sections. And notice that little heart that's attached doesn't get folded. It'll just flip over. Okay, returning everything back out to flat again, I'll go to the other side. And again, three sections. So there's a small tab. There's next to the big heart, but not the little small heart. See, that one's just going to continue to stick out for now. And then the other small tab. And they all get folded to the back, give it a good pinch, and then unfold them back out to flat again. Last two score lines to find are the tabs out on the edge of the final hearts. And both of those can be folded to the back and then returned back out to flat again. The heart pivot panels will fit in any size card that's at least three inches in height and when closed has at least four and three quarters on the width. And I am doing a standard A2, so four and a quarter high by 11 inches long scored in the middle for folding and then to those two panels I added slightly smaller pieces of pattern paper. So when you add pivot panels to a card, you want to make sure that the center of the pivot panels is directly over the fold of the card, and that can go anywhere along that fold. So I've gone a little higher than center so that I have room for borders at the bottom. So the two small tabs are the ones that get adhesive, and I'm using my Lineco Neutral pH adhesive in my fine tip bottle. We do sell both of those items on our website, but you could just as easily use a strong tape or glue dot and just making sure that the center stays right in the center of the card, I want to tuck those two little tabs under and attach them to the card. And let me just give a visual for where those tabs are attached. Basically, if I lift that up, you can see there that those two tabs have been tucked under and attached to the card. Okay, now I do the other side, same thing, keeping everything nice and flat with the center fold lined up, I just kick those two little tabs under and attach them to the card. Okay, with those four tabs attached, it's now possible to make this into a pop-up. So we want to reverse the fold in the middle so that it's coming up like a mountain, but really just the area above and below the row of hearts. If you push the fold between the third and fourth hearts, that whole row of hearts should be collapsing in the middle like a valley while you work the two panels themselves to come up like a tent or a mountain. Okay, so just closing the card and giving everything a good press, I've now got that main pop-up working. There is still the matter of the outer two tabs. They're going to attach to the card, but I won't do that just yet because I want to just flatten this all out again to be able to work on the decorations. The die set comes with decorator hearts. So you have two big ones, and those are the same size outer heart, but the inner decoration is a little different. But then on the two medium ones, those are actually identical. They're both stitched hearts. That way you can cut multiples really fast. Same with the small hearts. They're all the same size, but you can cut them really fast by having two dies, each cutting two at a time. So I always start with the big hearts, and then I put each one centered on each spot, and that way you'll get that staggered look to the hearts with that even shadow all the way around. And then there are eight spots in the sculpture for small hearts, and you'll see them in there, and once again, you can just center those in each of their spots. Watch the two that are next to each other in the center because you don't want to cross the fold line on those. 
Okay, so now I have 14 hearts on my sculpture and I'm ready to attach those outer tabs. Okay, my favorite way to attach the outer tabs is actually to add the adhesive on top of the tab, close the card up, being careful that I don't get my glue anywhere, that I don't want it to fold in next to that final heart, and then just give everything a good press against that exposed adhesive. And then I just reach in there and grab that tab as I open it since I'm using glue, make sure that it did set up. And then I go to the other side. Again, some strong adhesive on the tab. Then I'm going to close the card, but be careful of my glue, peeling back the edge of the card so that I can fold in next to that final heart and then just give everything a press against that exposed adhesive. So that's what's nice about the pivot panels, is even though they give that rather elaborate pop-up look, they're actually quite easy assembly. And then I just layered in a couple more small and medium hearts. Now I want to fill in the space in the card below the pop-up with some borders. So I will use our border blends dies. This is the Argyle set. In each set you get three dies, and those dies each cut their own cool positive space border. But in addition to that, they have tabs on them that when you line them up and cut them at the same time, you get a new border created between. So in this case, it'll look like hearts. And you can watch an instructional video on the border blends themselves to see more of those combinations. The border blends are five and a half inches in length, but of course you can extend them or cut them shorter. And not by design, but just a happy accident, the small heart from the heart pivot panels happens to fit really nicely on that particular border blend so that you can go in there and highlight a few of those hearts. Another great complementary die for the heart pivot panels would be Word Set 9 Love. So each of the three dies in the set will cut a connected phrase. So that means Love You is a single piece. Hugs and Kisses a single piece, XOXO a single piece. What's nice about that is when you want to use those up on the pop-ups, they're all connected together, but they're also pretty easy to snip apart into individual words when you want to. Now, if you'd like to make a very thin heart frame, start with a big die cut heart from the set and then take one of the medium stitched hearts and just line it right up over that big heart. And that die is going to pretty much come to the edges, so it's very easy to line it up. I would definitely tape the two together so it doesn't slide as you die cut. That will create that very thin heart-shaped frame. And then of course you can also use the medium stitched heart from the middle. I used a couple of those thin heart frames on my card and then just added some of our crosshatch rectangles as a place to sign and write a personal greeting. And now the only thing left is to figure out a simple lead in for the front of the card. So here's what I came up with, just using the exact same dies, some of my leftover hearts and pattern paper, just a simple little lead in for the front of the card. Okay, now a very quick little tutorial for how to use the heart pivot panels with the twist panel pop-up, which is sold separately. The first thing I did was cut and decorate a heart pivot panels. And then I switched to the twist panel die set. Now, if you are new to the twist panel die set, it has its own assembly video and you would watch that to get to this point where you have the card with the arms attached ready for panels. I also use the dies in the twist panel set to get two outer panels. So that's the die for the panels cut once, trimmed in half, and then any of the decorator pieces, I would want to do that first. Now, first thing with the heart pivot panels is to train the folds, and this is the identical process as if you were putting it in a card, which is to work your center fold first. I've chosen a cardstock that's pretty thick, so I'm going to go ahead and reinforce that fold with a bone folder, but I do want to do the center fold in both directions, so mountain, valley, and then back to flat. And then moving out to those small folds at the edge of the panel, which is a tab, the big heart, and another tab, and you ignore the small heart. Same thing on the other side. So edge of panels, small tab, big heart, small tab. In this case, the small heart is attached to the big heart, so it's going to flip over when you do that. Everything returns back out to flat again, and then the final folds are the tabs at the edge of the big hearts. So these heart pivot panels are going to become the two interior panels of our set for the twist panel. 
So instead of attaching it inside a card, we are going to attach these outer panels to the heart pivot panels. The glue goes on top of the tabs, just like if we were adding these to a card, so nothing changes. I've got glue on the two small tabs. In this case, I'm going to fold that big heart out of the way so that I can slide in my panel and attach it to those two tabs. And just make sure that the little heart goes on top of the panel so that little heart is not tucked underneath, it's actually on top. On the back of the piece, you can see where those two tabs are attached. Okay, moving to the other side and doing the same thing. So the adhesive goes on the two small tabs. I fold the big heart out of the way so I can easily slide in my panel and attach it to those two tabs. Training the pivot panels is going to be the same as if you were working in a card, which is you start in the center, you want to mount and fold above and below the hearts, but you want that valley in between the two hearts. So you've got opposite folds there. And then for attaching the final tab, if you just fold everything up, so we're going to fold in the center so the hearts go one way and the panels go the other way. And then we can fold in that final heart and tab, add some adhesive to the tab, and then close the panel against it. And if you are using glue, and you are a little impatient like I am, great idea to hold the tab as you open it, just make sure that the glue set up. Speeding this up as I do the other side, just folding in the heart and the tab, glue on the tab, fold the panel over, press against that adhesive until it sets up. So again, nothing hard about this technique, but it really does add quite a lot of impressive action to your twist panel set to have that extra pop-up going right through the panels. Adding the panels to the arms is usual assembly, which means you find the notch in the arms. That will both tell you where your tape should start or glue, and also which side it should be on, which is the square corner side. So the square corner has the notch, and that's the side that gets the tape or glue. And then I'm peeling up the liner of my tape so that both of the arms are sticky. And what I want to do is find the center the approximate center, I should say, of the panel, the outer panel, and then make sure the edge is along the edge. So I want the center of the panel pretty much at the fold line of the arm. That's usually pretty easy to do by eye. And if you watch that other assembly video for the twist panel, it'll give you a few tips for doing that. And then I like to grab the arms from underneath and actually pinch them closed as I let the card closed. It just helps them learn that twist for the first time. So just a great way to take two dies and use them together and get a different kind of look. I finished out my card using the decorator pieces from both die sets and then added our big script thank you die. The hearts can be used year round for all sorts of themes, but of course they also make great valentines. Okay, so now let's take a look at some further inspiration by our incredibly talented design team. Summer Hills Painter shows how you can use the heart pivot panels in our original tag book die set, but then also here's a great example by Sandy Diller where she used the heart pivot panels in the new circle tag book. Karen Aiken also shows that integration with this card. I just love her cute little blue chick on the front and adding those little chicks to the heart pivot panels inside. Here's a gorgeous love-themed card by Frances Byrne, and I like her use of the borders on this. And of course, you can always mix in your favorite stamps. So here's a great one by Fran Sabad using stamps, and another one by Lois Bach. And notice how lovely the heart pivot panels will work for wedding and anniversary cards. The heart pivot panels will be available on our website, as well as in a lot of your favorite online and retail stores starting January 31st, 2019. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenberniston.com, where you can find out information about purchasing these dies, as well as links to all my other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.